already look at, he look at that. Hello homebrewers and welcome to Homebrew Wild and Cheap. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different which uh, I'm pretty sure no one else has done. I seem to be doing a lot of firsts. Anyway, so today what we're going to be doing is making compound gin. This is part one really and uh, compound gin is pretty easy. It's basically gin in essence is just juniper berries. I mean we have other stuff that we add to it but it's just juniper berries. Now I happen to have gone online on eBay last year because I had the urge that I wanted to try and make my own gin, compound gin. And uh, I bought a load of juniper berries and I made some gin. Very nice. Uh, the only problem is compound gin is coloured. It isn't clear like you get in the shops. Uh, so to basically make this a bit more interesting, this is going to be a two-parter. Well, it's going to be more than two parts, but no, no, let's just, you know, carry on. Carry on. Uh, so yeah, compound gin. Compound gin it sounds dirty and disgusting, but it is fermented and not distilled. That is basically the definition of compound gin. So what I've got here is 20-ish grams of juniper berries. And I've also got three cardamom pods. Now there are a lot of other additions that you can add to make your own gin. You know, cucumber, lemon, licorice, you know, all many types of things you can add. But I'm just basically, we're making the very basic recipe today. So, went out and got, as you know, uh, some different yeasts. And I've got myself dessert yeast slash high alcohol yeast. Uh, this is because this has quite a high alcohol tolerance, so we don't have to mess around doing lots of other stuff. This can brew up to 18% by just chucking the sugar in, giving it some nutrient and leaving it to go. So what I've got here, looking all sexy like, is 1.3 kilos, around 1.3 kilos, there was slightly a bit left in because I took some sugar out, of another bag for doing something else, which we'll see later. So I've got 1.3 kilos of sugar right here. So we should be getting around the 18% mark to the maximum that this can get in one go. So basically, we should get started. Ta-da! <laughs> so I got my little pan. You don't need a big one for this, because what we're going to be doing, funny that, is making extracts. So I'm going to take my 20 grams-ish, 22.3 grams if you want to be exact, of juniper berries. Just throw them liberally in the pan, along with my three cardamom pods. Just, you know, all the gin recipes basically have a little bit of cardamom in, um, along with other stuff, but we just want the essence of, uh, of gin, which is juniper. In goes 1.6 litres of boiled water to make things, you know, quick and easy. And uh, just going to add in a good dollop of that, like so. Now, I'm going to leave this to boil for a few minutes. So, this has only been on for about three minutes. I just put it up to the boil, put it back into a simmer, and... Juniper berry. Smells of juniper berries. Funny that, since that's what we're after. Now, the colour is very... Uh, the colour of the water is very slightly changed. But basically, we're just hydrating these juniper berries. And I got my stick blender which I have a phobia of, so I only switch it on when I absolutely need it. I can turn this off now, because the water's up to temperature. Pardon me. The junipers have hydrated, and now... Like I said, there's thing, fingers and blades and there. So, we've just blitzed up the juniper berries and the cardamom pods. Ta-da! And it smells really nice. And this is what it looks like. Now, as you can tell, this does not look like gin. Gin is clear. This is not clear. We just wanted to get a mild gin-like taste to it, which is going to be awesome. Not going too nutty, because uh, you can, but we're not going to. So, into this, we're going to add in our sugars, since this water is nice and hot. So, so I have my demijohn, which has been sterilizing, since funny enough, just before the video. It doesn't take very long to make this, which is awesome. 
since uh, the root beer one did go on a little bit, but eh, needs must, needs must as the devil drives. Just stir. So, as you can tell, I got my lovely rocking my glass demijohn today. So, you know, it's what I got. Uh, the other stuff is still brewing, so this is what I got. So, since this is rather warm, this is glass, same as you would plastic, I'm going to put some cold water in there and it will even out the temperature. So, funny enough, in goes in about a litre of lovely prepared cold water. We've got our lovely gin, which actually smells kind of nice. It's in the background, got a bit of the car in there, it's not too in your face. And I'm going to pour it all in, including the pulp of the juniper berries. So, as you can tell, definitely doesn't look like gin. And funny enough, we've still got some of this lovely, lovely sugary stuff in the bottom because it hasn't quite dissolved. Ah, oh, I feel, feel for it. I feel terrible for it. I really don't. So, in goes the excess of the sugar that did not dissolve in the water. Oh, it's terrible. Always get stuck around the handles. I want all of these bits. Top it up rather high since there is not much that can foam and flow off. Get in there like that. Looks about right. Now, since all the sugar hasn't dissolved, which it should have, it's terrible. Now, because we're using quite a lot of sugar, don't worry if it doesn't all dissolve. Just move this out of the way. Pick it up, cover with your hands, got clean hands, been sterilizing stuff, and liberally shake it so we can get a relatively accurate reading with the hydrometer. Lovely sterilized hydrometer. So let's see what it's saying currently. Right. So according to this hydrometer, I have to try a bit more. Hmm. See, it's not too gin, gin-like. It's not in-your-face gin, but it will get stronger over time. But we don't want it too strong, personally. So it is saying it's 17%. Got distracted with my gin rant. So it is 17% currently, and there's a little bit of, fair enough, sugar, which hasn't dissolved, but the yeast will get that, of about, you know, 1%-ish around. So it's around 17, 18%. So I've got myself some yeast nutrient, and no spoon. Ah, now this really is a Mickey Mouse operation. So I have returned with a spoon. And we've got our yeast nutrient. Get on there. So adding a general glug. Slash a little bit for the side. And just going to give it one and a quarter teaspoons. Just to make sure that there is plenty of nutrient in there. To give our yeasties the best chance of fermenting everything without there being a hitch or getting it stuck. So again, using my dessert yeast, the high alcohol yeast, since I don't want to mess around with it and we are making gin, so, you know, gin is strong. And this is perfectly strong, so in goes some yeast. Yeah, that should be enough. Just a little sprinkle, just enough to make sure there's plenty in there. So, nah. not having a good morning here. So we put the yeast nutrient in. Duh. Give it another shake. There we go. So we give it another shake, just to mix all the nutrients in, because I'm a bit sparse, and the yeast it seems. So now we're going to put the top on it. So, as you can tell, we have just made compound gin. We didn't need a bathtub, and uh, yeah, no one's died. Check that, London had it wrong. 
So, uh, now what we're going to do is I'm going to label this off camera because you know how to stick a label on. And so you don't get your stuff mixed up. If you're only making one thing at a time, you don't need to do it, I suppose, but this is how you make gin. Check that, isn't that cool? It's a very basic recipe, but it's going to work. And it has a lovely colour, which other gin doesn't. But anyway, so guys, this is how you make gin without the bathtub. Hope you liked the video. Uh, rate, subscribe, comment, you know, usual, share with your friends. Usual stuff. And uh, what we'll do is I'll see you for part two. Catch you later.